In this video, we're going to be going over 14 really useful words for talking about the desert in the Arabic language. So let's get into it. Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your Arabic teacher Sam and a very warm welcome back to another video here on the channel. Those of you who have been following this channel for a little while, you kind of know that we like to organise things into topics or into whole playlists normally. You know, ones that we've done in the past include, we did Arabic grammar time, we did 10 episodes of Arabic grammar time, we did a whole walkthrough of the story of the Prophet Huda alayhi salam. So we did, I think there's about 12 videos in that series as well. As well as um, we did a series called Arabic Phrase of the Day. So we like to kind of do things in playlists and we're starting this new playlist just called Topic Time. So we're going to kind of do a new topic every Saturday and um, yes, that's what we're going to be doing. And this one, obviously, we're doing the desert. So before we get into the nitty gritty of it, I really just want to thank our sponsors. So the sponsors of this series for at least the next vi next six videos is, is um, Arabic Workshop. So Arabic Workshop, it's important to understand what it is and how you can really get the most out of it because... Um, really the, the resources that exist in the world are pretty much like either courses or books and sometimes students need just something else to bolt on to their current program or whatever their studies are and that's exactly what Arabic Workshop is and it's it's the it's the world's first Arabic listening library you know it's a listening library a whole kind of Netflix style bank of lessons that you can learn the kind of immersive Arabic language lessons from proving your listening mainly that's the main thing that it focuses on but there's a really interesting a um, really interesting vocab builder in there loads of opportunity for you to kind of see the words actually put into sentences and stuff too so it's a really cool little app that you can bolt onto whatever program you're doing and it's also available inside um, my program which is the Arabic in 60 steps program so um, yes you can obviously bolt it onto the Arabic in 60 steps program as well if you're one of my students too so go and check out uh, Arabic uh, workshop I'll leave a link to it in the description below but uh, if you're listening on the podcast and you can't see my screen then just go to arabicworkshop.com and if you want 10% off then put in Arabic with Sam 10 and you'll get 10% off as well when you uh, you know when you check out so without further ado Let's get into it, inshallah. So what are these 14 words that we're going to talk about with the desert? And I, I kind of want to um, just say one last thing before we actually get into the first words, that, um, you know, the, the main kind of mission of the, of the Arabic in 60 Steps program, and, and by extension, all of the content that I put out, is really kind of Arabic to enrich the soul. Like, we're, we're not necessarily teaching Arabic for people to um, do a job interview to get a job in Dubai. Like, we, we, we want our students to engage really meaningfully with literature and with Islamic texts and stuff like that and and that's kind of why that's kind of how I've chosen the coming topics that we're going to be doing you know we've got topics that are really common and really powerful in Arabic literature you know that's kind of the main focus that we have so we have topics like the topic of the desert which you can you can obviously understand why that's that's a very kind of iconic topic for Arabic literature we have the topic of love in any literature, right? Well, any creative genre in general, right? But we have love, we have death, and things like that coming up. So, um, yeah, so let's get into it. So, what is the first word? Obviously, the first word is the word for a desert, right? It's Sahara, Sahara, spelled with a sod. And um, obviously, it is where our English word, the Sahara, comes from. You know, like that. That took me a little while to piece together when I was at uni and I first heard this word. But the, the word for the desert is a Sahara, which sounds like the word Sahara. In English, and obviously the, the the Sahara Desert in Arabic would just mean the desert desert, right? But but obviously the language that's spoken by the majority of the people who live in the Sahara is, is Arabic, right? So they would call it a Sahara, and that's kind of how they got how they got the term for it. I have a whole episode in my podcast. There might be episode four where I kind of I'm speculating in a lot of the episode, but I'm talking about words that. Sort of that, that exist in English, which are Arabic words, right? And so, so some of them are direct borrowings, some of them are just coincidences. But um, if you're interested in that kind of etymology as I am, then uh, go to episode four of the Arabic Sound podcast. Anyway, so the next word, we're going to go over some words for camel. Um, there are lots. There's a whole book called Kitabul Ibl, um, where there's literally hundreds of words uh, for camel. But we're going to go over the four most common that I've seen in, in Arabic literature. And um, some of these are used in the Qur'an as well, but, um, but these are kind of the most common ones. So the first one, and the most kind of generic term for camel, is jemel. And uh, I think that's specifically a, specifically a dromedary camel. I think that's what we call them in English, with one hump. Um, a jemel, specifically. There's, a, there's another word, for, I think they're called Bactrian camels, with two humps. But, um, but anyway, the camels with one hump uh, is a jemel. Another word that is really common is the word ibl, right? Um, to be honest, I don't really know the, the, the nuance between that. I think, I think an ibl specifically needs to be a male camel, but uh, I, I don't actually, I don't know entirely. Next one is the word ba'ir. I've seen the word ba'ir a lot to mean like a riding beast. 
Um, but it's it's used for for camel specifically. I've seen it in in sort of classical literature and stuff too. Yeah, a ba'ir. And then a, a word just of a slight nuance is the word naqa. Naqatun is a is a she camel. You know yeah, that that can't be anything else, right? There, there's no male camel that can ever be a naqa. It's it's specifically for um. Yeah, it's, uh, it's specifically for a she camel, and that is also in the Quran as well, if I'm not mistaken. So um, I wanted to talk about some some um, synonyms for the word desert, um, because I remember I remember when I was in my second year at uni, we did we, we read a text and we came across a word for the desert, um, which was mafazatun, mafazatun, and obviously a lot of you, especially those of you who are on my program, if if you've done step nine, I think where we do hollow verbs. You'll probably have met the verb faza yafuzu, which means to win or to have a victory of something. And um, also, um, yeah, so somewhere in Juz Amma, in the Quran, Allah, Allah uses inna lil muttaqina mafaza. So that is that's the word mafaz, but this is mafazatun. And a mafaz means a victory, right? But mafazatun, it does come from the same root, actually. And it's, like my, my teacher kind of explained it to me by saying that. Like the desert would often have victory over people, you know, kind of the, the desert kind of conjures a, a, a connotation of um, of people disappearing in the desert, right? Like people who make it through the desert have kind of had victory, or if they don't make it through the desert, the, de- the, the desert's had victory over them, right, and has defeated them. And uh, yes, the word mefazetun, you, you'll find it in dictionaries and stuff too, but, um, but yeah, that's one. Another one is the word badia, badia tun, and I actually didn't realize that this word existed in Arabic. It's the word that people use when they speak Somali. Um, I'm learning Somali. Some of you guys might know that I have a YouTube channel called Sam of Somalia, which is kind of about me just trying to learn Somali. But um, like if in in Somali, when they use the term badia, they really just mean like the countryside. Like it might not be desert as such. When they use the term badia, they just mean like away from the away from the cities. Right, it, it might be in very like lush green, you know, hills and countryside, but they they call it the Berdia. But um, and obviously you can kind of, you can kind of see where it um, it shares a root with um the term for Bedouin that we have in English, which has obviously come from the Arabic Bedou. Um, yeah, cool. So those are two other words for desert that exist in Arabic, and you you you'll probably find Berdia in in the Arabic dictionaries as well to be a synonym for um a Sahara. Um, next, we have the word bitter, bitter, which means a well. Um, this is one of those words you've got to watch out for because it's feminine. Um, you, usually in Arabic, generally as a rule, if a word has a tet mod bota, it's feminine. If it doesn't, it's masculine. But there is kind of a handful of words, including, you know, bitter, nar, dar. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a handful of others. Um, rih, shams, words, words that don't have a tet mod bota, but they are feminine. And uh, the word bitter is one of those two. Um, the next word that I wanted us to say is the word reml, which means sand. Reml, obviously, a desert is most is basically sand. It's basically just a big, it's a big sand pit. It's essentially what a desert is. So you need you need to know your reml. Next one, najm, najmun, najmatun. Najm, I I believe is kind of a is a is a collective term for stars, right? But um, a najma with a term on the end would be the word for a a one star, and then nujum is the the, the plural, and nujum would be the stars, not to be confused with um, you know, it would be best to refer to the tafsir for this, but um, like I, I, I'm just gonna raise the the point of it because lots of even beginner students know about it. So so in in the in Surat Yusuf, um, yeah, in the story of Yusuf salam, he says that he's seen that he's seen eleven stars, and he uses the term kokab. He says kokab for it, but in kind of modern usage, when we're teaching like modern Arabic, we we teach that a nejm is stars is a star, or a nejmat one is a star, and um, and that a kokab is a planet, right? Because a a kokab sort of in its definition, it doesn't have like burning in it. It's you know it's just a just a thing, right? A, a kokab, the plural of which is kawerkib. Anyway. So that's just a literary point that's, that's important to bear in mind. Uh, next one is a palm tree. Um, yes, yeah, subhanAllah, my, my wife and I, literally 10 minutes ago, we, we were reading um, Surat Maryam, and there's, um, there's, a, there's an ayah when Allah says, um, well, Allah says, um, 
huzi ilayki bi jidhi an-nakhlati tusaqid alayki rutuban jannia so um it's saying to maryam um that she should um shake a nakhla shake um shake, shake a nakhla a palm tree yeah and obviously palm trees are what we associate with the desert unless you watch a lot of midwestern movies where it's sort of cactuses but that's not really this there aren't like cactuses in arabic literature like it's it's usually if there's a tree in the desert it's usually a nakhlatun Good. And then also in that ayah, Allah uses the term rutab, right? So rutab means dates, right? When students see it's translated, it means dates. But they also know the word timar to mean dates as well, right? Like usually we use the term timar. And, but, but, but in this ayah, Allah is using the term rutab. So, so what is the difference? So like timar that we eat, um, that's dried dates. You know, specifically if they're dried, the ones we break our fast with and stuff. But rutab is what um, Maryam would have been eating when she shook the tree. They're fresh dates. You know, they're wet, fresh dates. Is uh, yeah, is is rutab. They 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 have specific meanings. The last word that I want us to cover in this very short um, little video is um, is a word that you'll all be familiar with. It's just the word qahwatun, qahwatun, and um, specifically like when you go to Arab countries. There's a kind of coffee which is really old that, that Arabs would have been drinking for a long time. Like like in the Arab world now, you, you'll get like Italian coffees, right? You'll get cappuccinos and lattes and stuff. And like there's there's Starbucks and stuff in like all Arab countries, right? I remember there being drive through Starbucks in Jordan before I knew of any in the UK. But anyway, so um, so a qahwa sada. There's this word sada, like specifically for like a small, black, powerful coffee. And uh, yeah, yeah, like that. That's very, very old. Because you, you imagine how appropriate that is for drinking coffee in the desert. Like you want minimum wastage of water, right? So you drink it really small, but maximum power, right? So, so these small, like really sort of almost syrupy, thick coffee. That's a qahwa uh, sada. That's what you should order if um, yeah, if you if you're in an Arab restaurant or anything, you want like a powerful little coffee. That's um, but then, but then having coffees with like added milk and stuff. I assume that's I assume that's pretty recent, really, but I, I, I don't really know. So um, so I will say, if you want to continue your study of these kind of um, words we've been talking about around the desert, then there is a really useful lesson inside of Arabic Workshop. It's in level five. There's a lesson on a trip to the pyramids um, where you'll learn a lot of really useful vocabulary as well. You kind of expand the list that we've been building in this lesson. As well as in the, in the same level, I think, in level five, there's also a lesson on visiting the Haram as well, which is obviously also in the desert, and you'll probably build your vocabulary for that too. So so for the, all of those of you who are joining um, Arabic Workshop, or you've already joined it, you can go over there and uh, you know you can make the most of those resources over there, because those are both in level five. And uh, that is it for today's video. So make sure you come back tomorrow, because tomorrow we'll be doing talks. So we're doing topics on Saturday. We're doing talks, which is kind of the podcast, kind of longer form, talking about learning Arabic. And uh, that's what we'll be talking about tomorrow, inshallah. So, and then on Friday, we're doing texts. So we have like texts on Fridays, topics on Saturdays, and then talks on Sundays. All of it will be available on the podcast. So for those of you who prefer to just listen, or you've got a commute or whatever, you just kind of want to listen to these videos as you go, then we're available on any platform. Just go to Arabic with Sam in uh, your preferred podcast platform, and you can listen to them as well. Excellent. Um, so that's it. So what I'd like for you guys to do, a little bit of homework for you, is uh, put in the comments someone who would like me to have as a guest on the show. Within the past few weeks, we've had Ryan, who's the CEO of Arabic Workshop and also a really good friend of mine. We've had him as a guest and we've also had our brother Shaheen Ar-Rahman, who is the founder of ar Rahma UK. Um, we had him on the show very recently as well. So um, if you have any other ideas for guests, um, then I'll see what I can do and we'll get them on the channel as well. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, and I really hope you did, please do not forget to like and share it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.